Welcome to this episode of my Oracle BI video tutorial. I will be building a simple report and then in no time transform it into an interactive one by adding a few powerful layouts, the view selector and the column selector. In the creation process of a report, once we have found data and we have transformed the data we found into the data we need, finding the right visualization technique that matches the reporting needs of the end user is of the utmost importance. For instance, we could provide insight according to the situation the end user is in, a graph in case he wants to discuss results with coworkers, or a table in case he wants to analyze individual data records. Or we could provide the end user choices through prompts and selectors without having to redesign the report for him. Let us start by finding and transforming the data I need to show the power of the view and the column selector. For this, I will be using the Sales CRM Customer Overview subject area. As a dimension, I will be using the industry name. And as a fact, I will be using the pipeline facts open opportunity revenue. Let us have a look at the results so far. All I have is a simple basic table and that is exactly what I like. I like to make sure that I have checked my data in a table view before I start adding other visualizations. I see straight away that we have some information about open opportunity revenue not linked to an industry. Let me filter this out for this particular exercise. I go back to criteria and I add a filter on industry name specifying that I only want to see records for which the industry name is available or for which the industry name is not empty. Let's check the results again. And there we go, the basic table on top of which we now will be adding a column and a view selector so you can see how easy it is to make interactive reports. In order to show the full potential of the view selector, I need to have multiple views available. Right now, I only have two, a title view and a table view. So let me add a graph. I go to create a new view and among the graphs I choose the vertical bar chart. I now have two different visual representations of the same data, the table and my vertical bar chart. Let me rename this view. You'll see later on why this is important. Click on my view, I choose the option Rename View. And I rename it to Vertical Bar Chart. Let us have a look at what the end user would see in case he would open up this report. I choose Preview. He would see a table and under the table, the vertical bar chart as we created it. Now this takes up quite a bit of user interface in case I would display this on a page in the application. Valuable user interface. And maybe the user is not interested in the table. He just wants to see the bar chart or vice versa. Instead of displaying both at the same time, it's better to give the user the option to choose the one he wants to see. For this, we have the view selector. I will be removing the table and the vertical bar chart from the results. They are actually not deleted. They still exist. They are just hidden or rather not shown. Look, the table and the vertical bar chart are still here. 
I will add a new view called the view selector under other views. A view selector is a visualization technique by which we don't put the views on the report that we think are useful for the user, but we allow the user to choose the ones he likes to see. In this case, we will allow the end user to choose the table or the vertical bar chart. And this is why renaming views up front is important. In case I would have had multiple graphs, I would not have been able here to find the one I actually need because they would all have been called graph one, two, three, or whatever. Renaming them up front allows me to choose quickly the one I need in the view selector. And now as an end user, I can choose between the table or the vertical bar chart and go back whenever I need. So far, we've given the end user one option. He can choose the way the data is visualized in the report. In this case, as I showed earlier, he can choose between looking at the table or at the bar chart representation of the data. Let's give the user some more options. For this, I will be adding a column selector, other views, column selector. And I'll put it on top. Where the view selector allows an end user to switch between views on the data, a column selector allows the end user to choose the columns for the data. Let's start with a simple example. I will allow the end user to change the industry name for, let's say, the customer country for which we have open opportunity revenue information. So now the end user can choose between a table and a vertical bar chart, but he can also change industry name for customer country and the rest of the report changes with it. Look how now in my table report, I no longer have an industry column, I have a customer country column. And we can take this a step further. I can also allow the end user to change open opportunity revenue information for something else. For instance, Let's pick the number of customers in that country or industry and the number of open opportunities in that customer country or industry. So now my end user can choose between two views and can start playing with the data. I can choose to see the number of customers in a country, the number of open opportunities in a country, or maybe per industry. Back to open opportunity revenue. Back to a bar chart. So this simple report combines two, six, 12 different views at a certain data set. The user has many options, and from a design point of view, I never have to give design rights to an end user to make any of these changes. He can do it at runtime. Let me show you another example of what a fantastic report you can make by being creative with these views and column selectors. Let me make a new report and based on the same subject area. What I will do here is select industry name twice and choose again the fact that I used initially in my previous report, opportunity open revenue. Let's have a quick look at the results. And 
you might be curious on why I chose industry name twice, but I'll explain that in a minute. Now I will be adding a column selector where I allow the end user to switch out the second industry name for customer country again. Watch what happens. If I change industry name for customer country, I get more records. I get more rows. I get more detailed information. I can go back, and this looks more like a roll-up, doesn't it? Detailed information rolled up to industry. Detailed information rolled up to industry. Except that if I roll up, I would prefer not to see the second industry column. Go back into my column selector and look how I have options here for both columns. I go into the column properties for the second industry column and I specify that I want to hide it on the second tab, column format, hide. Okay, let's look at the results. I choose the second industry column, which is now hidden, or I choose customer country to see more details. To really finish off this exercise, I'm going to go back into my column selector, back into column properties for the industry name, the hidden column, and I'm going to rename this to rollup. Now the end user can choose to see the customer country or the rolled up information. To summarize this episode, I showed you how you can use the view selector to allow the end user to choose between views within the report. And the column selector to allow the end user to choose between columns in the report. Why is this important? For the report designer, because he can combine multiple reports into a single one. And the advantage for the end user is that he has choice. He can change the report at runtime without having to go into the designer, without having to understand how to make reports. He can just choose views and columns as he likes it. I hope you liked this video and learned something from it and hope to see you soon for another episode in my Oracle BI video tutorial.